Hey, it's a lovely summer's evening. Warm, but it's a cool breeze blowing. Have you ever read a story called The Sound Machine? A very famous author called Roald Dahl wrote it. Let me tell you something about this well-known writer. He was born on the 13th of September, 1916 in Wales. His parents were Norwegians who immigrated to United Kingdom. As a young boy, Roald didn't like school very much. In his book called Boy, he describes his school life. He was very unhappy as he was always bullied and beaten up. Roald didn't go to university. Instead, he applied for a job and was sent to East Africa. And that was exactly what he wanted. Great heat, crocodile snakes and safaris. He lived in a jungle, learned to speak Swahili and suffered from malaria. He started writing short stories in 1942 when he was sent to Washington. He wrote The Sound Machine in 1949. His stories have been translated into 34 different languages and have been bestsellers all over the world. His stories are mostly about fantasy and imagination. They are sometimes cruel, but never without humor. In most of his stories, his characters are not what they appear to be. He died on the 23rd of November, 1990 at the age of 74 in Oxfordshire, England. Sound machine. It's about a man called Klosner who is obsessed with sound. He has a theory that there are many, many, many sounds in the world that the human ear is unable to hear because of their high frequencies. I'll tell you more about Klosner as we go along, okay? Oops, I think I see him coming up the path now. Oh, by the way, as you watch Klausner in action, try and figure out what kind of a person he is. His character. Okay, bye. Yes, yes, T today's the day, today I will succeed, today's my day.
What is this, right? This is my diagram. Ah, yes. Yes, that's right. Good. Good. Yes. Well, well, well. So this is where you hide yourself in the evenings. Hello, Scott. I happened to be passing, so I dropped in to see how you were. There was no one in the house, so I came on down here. How's that trip of yours been behaving? It's alright. It's, it's fine. I'm here. I might as well have a look at it. Please don't trouble. I'm right here. I'm, I'm fine. You've got your head on. Oh, oh, have I? What is this? Making a radio? No. Yeah, just, just fooling around. It's got rather complicated looking in it. Yes. What is it? It's rather frightening looking thing, isn't it? It's just an idea. Yes. It has to do with sounds, that's all. Good heavens, man. Don't you get enough of that sort of thing all day in your work? I, I like sound. So it seems. Well, I won't disturb you. Glad your throat's not worrying you anymore. What's it really for? You made me inquisitive. All right. I'll tell you. If you're interested. Um, well, the theory is very simple, really. The human ear, you know that it can't hear everything. There are sounds that are so high pitch or so low pitch that you can't hear it at all. Any note so high that it has more than 15,000 vibrations a second, we cannot hear it. Dogs have better ears than us. You know, you can always buy a whistle with a note so high pitch that you can't hear it at all. But, but a dog can hear it. Yes, I've seen one. Of course you have. And up the scale, higher than the note of that whistle, there is another note. Vibration if you like, but I prefer to think of it as a note. You can't hear that one either. And, and above that, there is another, and another note, right up the scale, forever and ever and ever. An endless succession of notes, an infinity of notes. There is a note, if only our ears could hear it. So high that it vibrates a million times a second, and, and another million times as high as that. Going on and on, higher and higher, as far as numbers goes, which is infinity, eternity, beyond the stars. There may be anything. For all we know, there may. Yes, yes. But it's not very probable. Why not? Why not? You see that fly? What sort of noise is that fly making now? None that one can hear. But for all we know, that fly might be whistling like mad on a very high note, or barking, or croaking, or singing a song. It's got a mouth, hasn't it? It's got a throat. Well, so you're going to check up on that? Some time ago, I made a simple instrument that proved to me the existence of many odd inaudible sounds. Often have I sat and watched the needle of my instrument recording the presence of sound vibrations in the air when I myself could hear nothing. And those are the sounds that I want to listen to. I want to know where they come from and, and who or what is making them. And that machine there is going to allow you to hear these noises? It may. Who knows? So far, I've had no luck. But I made some changes in it. And tonight, I'm ready for another trial. This machine is designed to pick up sound vibrations in the air that are too high-pitched for, for the reception of the human ear. 
and to convert them into a scale of audible tones. And I tune into 30,000 on my machine, I would hear the squeak of the bat very clear. I would even hear the correct note, F sharp or, or B flat, or whatever, whatever it might be, but merely at a lower pitch. Don't you understand? And you're going to try it tonight? Yes. Well, I wish you luck. My goodness, I must fly. Goodbye and thank you for telling me. I must call again sometime and find out what happened. Garden, and then perhaps, perhaps, the reception will be better. Lift it up now, carefully. Oh, God, it's heavy. Sounds like Klausner trying to get out. Silly man! Perhaps he should put his machine down, open the door, lift the machine up again and walk out instead of trying to walk through it. Anyway, so now you know what Klausner is up to. He has put his final touches to his sound machine and he's coming out here to test it. Let's watch and see what happens. But before that, here are two questions for you. From what you have seen so far, what kind of a person do you think Klausner is? And do you think Dr. Scott believes in Clausen's theory? Where are they? I'm sure I had them with, with me. Oh, silly me. They must be still in the shed. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Yes, yes. Now I'm ready. Definitely. Yes. Mrs. Saunders! Mrs. Saunders! Yes, Mr. Closer, can I help you? Cut another one, please. Cut another one, quickly. Why, Mr. Closer? What's the matter? Please do as I ask. Cut just one more rose. Certainly, Mr. Closer, if you like. Alright, that's enough. No more, please. No more. Going to